So every region has a sound, and that's the sound of the earth. So we've talked about the sound of heaven, what is God saying for the moment. Then you've got the sound of the earth. Let's talk about the sound of man next. Mm. So the sound of man is whatever is the modern sound of the day, the culture of the day. So if we're just going to generally talk about um, 15 to 25 year olds, what they would listen to right now in the UK, what would it be? Doesn't have to be Christian music. Dance music. Dance music. Really? Is anyone into Justin Bieber or? Yeah. Ed Sheeran or something like that. Ed Sheeran. Yep. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. My daughter, my twelve-year-old, did to, to him. Um, so that is a reflection of the modern culture of the day. Now, if you actually break down and listen to that music, you'll hear. Oh, you know, like a lot of those. Some of it might have loops. Some of it, like you're saying, dance music. Um, if it was folk, it would be, oh, it's got violin or it's got that. So you put those three elements together, sound of earth, sound of heaven, and sound of man, and you've got yourself songs that reach a nation. Mm. It's as simple as that, you know. And I think the mistake we make in living in a prophetic culture and really desiring revival is we think it's really esoteric. We just think it's over here and we're going to accidentally stumble into it if we pray hard enough. Mm. But actually, we're not just worshippers, we're worship warriors. And so we've got to think. We've got to go, what is God doing? And, you know, there's lots of signposts in the road and God is trying to help us see. Mm. And this is one of the ways, is going, well, actually, it's in the scriptures. There's these three... These three realms that can be impacted, what does that look like when we break it down? Oh, it looks like this. Okay, when I write a song, I'm going to try and encapsulate all those things and see what happens. You just you start experimenting. Wow. Now, at first, it's overwhelming. And what I tend to do, and what we tend to do when we workshop this, is we break those three elements into different workshops. So if you're with your team, you can go, let's work on the sound of heaven today. Or let's work on the sound of man today. Let's work on the sound of the earth today and just start to really think about how the people that you're trying to impact are reached because that's what it's about yeah. you know we're not just giving glory to the lord we're trying to help people experience mm. that glory aren't we yeah. so it's really important for us to be strategic and be be warriors yeah. you know and go okay i mean i love that i know we've talked about this hundreds of times over the years if you're a, a been a worshiper in church a long time but it was the worshipers that went before the the yeah. army wasn't yeah. it yeah. now i can't imagine it's like the worshipers of today who have absolutely no idea where they're going they're like we'll just feel the spirit i don't th i think they were strategic right. they knew that the sound that yeah. carried these three elements was going to displace the enemy yeah, well, yeah. it's good so all of a sudden we've got tools. We're not just trying to guess or fumble our way into the presence of God. And, you know, I love the whole story of Jesus turning water into wine and how he said to his mother Mary, it's not yet my time, but he still did it. Yeah. Now, what has that got to do with what I'm saying? If we actually really want revival, let's not just wait for God to come. Let's go, all right, God, we're going to do whatever we can. Mm. We are coming to you. We are going to draw out yeah. of you. Yeah. We are going to redeem the time, mm. which is what Mary, that's what actually happened. Yeah. He said, it is not yet my time. And then half an hour later, he turned water into wine. Mm. That's amazing to yeah. me that yeah. one person could pull at the mercy mm. of Jesus mm. yeah. and redeem the time. Mm. What would that look like if we did that? Mm. If we said, God... It's not just would you come. It's like, God, where are you? We're coming to find you. And we're going to bring it back. Because, And I think he wants it more than us, you know. I think we have had this mentality that we're not ready, that we have to have everything set up and right before God comes. But God wants it as much as us. And so us stepping into that and just pulling it, out of him, you know, drawing from our dad, just like a little kid would from yeah. his papa, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, I, for those of you who have kids, you'll know this story. So my daughter might go, Mum, can we go to the shops and buy dot, dot, dot? I'm like, no. Like, I'll be cooking. I, I reckon parents say no more than any other word in the world. So I'll be chopping up. Can we do this? Even before she's finished, I'm like, no. <laughs> She'll come back two minutes later. Can we do this? No. 
five minutes later, can we do this? No. And then finally it'll be, how many times do I have to say no? I've said no a million times. I'm not doing it. I've already said no. And then the next day I'm like, do you want to go to the shops and go and get that thing? Because then I'm just like, she really, really wants it, you know? <laughs> and so I think sometimes it's, I don't know, I just think the Lord is waiting for us yep. to ask, yeah. you know? Yeah. He's yeah. waiting for us. Anyway, that's just my little thing. Songs birthed in heaven and sung on the earth have the greatest potential for impacting every sphere of the universe. Mm. That's so true. I mean, have, can you think of a song? Have you ever been in the supermarket and you hear a song and it takes you back to some time in your life? Yeah. Yeah. I love that feeling. That's like Duran Duran for me and uh, <laughs> some other bands that probably half the people here haven't heard of. But it's, it's an amazing feeling. Songs can draw feelings out of you. And a song from heaven, how much more can a song from heaven do that? And, you know, in fact, some of those global songs that we've talked about that have really impacted the earth that everybody's singing, it's not actually even the song that is what makes it amazing. It's the story. It's the testimony. It's the revelation that has come from heaven in that song you know i think of um good good father mm. as an example yeah. you know that was a song for the moment wasn't it so much revelation everyone could relate to that and so a song that is birthed in heaven and then released on the earth has so much impact on the earth i'm digressing for a minute but i heard this beautiful story of this man who had a vision and he went to heaven and he was walking the streets of heaven with jesus and he walked past these angels who were singing one of his songs. And he couldn't believe it. And he said to Jesus, I cannot believe you're singing one of my songs in heaven. And Jesus says to him, what do you mean one of your songs? It was just one of ours and you listened one day. And you brought it to heaven. Now, wouldn't that be cool? I, mean, I wouldn't mind that. I <laughs> love it. So we're going to talk about this as much as we can. Before God does something new on the earth, he looks for someone that he can tell. Yay, I want to be that person. Yeah. Before he does something new on the earth, he looks for someone he can tell. He's always wanting to partner with mankind. Now, this could be because God has given man dominion over the earth, so he doesn't do anything without man's partnership. But he is wanting to partner with us. He's wanting us to find that sound. Isaiah 42 verse 9 says this, See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. God goes, before they spring into being, I'm going to tell you about it. Before something happens in your community, in your church, in your family, if you come and talk to me, I'm going to tell you about it. If you need a song that's going to transform your city, come and talk to me. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to show you the sound. Wow. Amos 3 verse 7 says this, Surely the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. So what if the new things you're waiting for God to do are actually waiting on you? They're just sitting there waiting. Here's another thing we're going to talk about. When God declares new things to man, it is so that man can create a new song out of them. Have you ever thought about that? There's actually scriptures on it. I'll say it again. When God declares new things to man, it is so that man can create a new song out of them. Some teachers take the new song as something figurative or symbolic, and you certainly can do that, you know, when we talk about singing the new song. But what about if we always took the, the Bible literally first? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about doing it like that? Like just going, well, what does it literally mean before we think of it being figurative? And if that's the case then what is God talking about when he, he says these things? Isaiah 42, verses 9 to 10. He says, Before they spring into being, I announce them to you, sing to the Lord a new song. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> so the new thing is actually waiting for a new song. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's yeah. connected. Mm -hmm. That revelation and what God's wanting to do on the earth is connected to a sound, it's connected to a song. You know, there's a theologian, I can't remember the person's name, but he actually said, we can't tell from history what comes first, the song, the sound, or the revival, because they're so intertwined. 
And you know, at the moment in Australia, we've got a few things going on in different pockets where the same thing's happening. We've got um, my friends Ben and Jody Hughes in Queensland are a part of what's called the Pineapple Revival. I don't know if you heard of these guys, but the reason it's called the Pineapple Revival is because they live on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland and where they were having their meetings was at the Big Pineapple, which is this giant pineapple, right? So there's like a conference centre in there. And they thought that they'd just run a couple of nights of ministry. Well, it, it ended up happening every night for something like four months. Yeah. And it just didn't stop healing signs, wonders. Then they had a little break and they'd just come back and it's like the second wave and it's just, it's just crazy what's happening. But again, powerful worship, worship that's impacting people. Yeah. It's not just about great teaching. So the new thing is waiting for the new song. A new song, Sound of Revival, is the sonification of what God is about to do or say. It's not a song that's born out of the mind or the heart or even the spirit of man. It's a prophetic song that is birthed in heaven. So how does God do it? How does he share his intentions so that they can be turned into two songs? Well, why does he do it? Why does he share his intentions in the form of a song? Well, this is what I think. I think, firstly, it's to communicate. He wants to communicate his intentions so they'll be recognised when he releases them. Blaise Pascal said this, It's not those that write the laws that have the greatest impact on society, but those who write the songs. That's pretty cool. But he also wants to co-create them through the declaring process. Yeah. So God is actually wanting to partner with us. Mm -hmm. He's wanting us to be a part of what he wants to do on the earth, which is really powerful. Yeah. We're not going to get through all these notes and I want to give you some things to do. So we're going to we're going to try and do this with not as much teaching as I would like, but we are going to have a go. So ha what's some practical ways that we can find that song of heaven? I'm going to throw that idea at you and then give you some ideas. What about Finding the song of heaven through the Rima word, a scripture that yeah. God's quickening yeah. to your heart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. turning it into a song. Yeah. You know, um, I've got a 12-year-old daughter and a 5-year-old son, and in between I was told I probably wouldn't have any more children, so that's why there's a big gap. And I remember this scripture that just kept coming to my heart all the time, which was, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. And I would sit down, because that, that scripture in that time, even though I've known it my whole life, was a real revelation to me. And so I just sat down and I wrote this song that no one will ever hear. It will never probably be recorded, but I would sing it. In that season, I just would sing, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart And do not depend on my own understanding Trust in the Lord with all of my heart And he will direct my path and I'll just sing it in the car to myself. And, you know, it kept me going. It was, it was really precious yeah. that season. So, yeah, finding the songs through the Rima word. What about this? We find the song of heaven through the corporate cry of our hearts mm -hmm. and our hope and vision for a better tomorrow. 